Today guys, I'm installing new oil injection lines on a two-stroke engine. As you can see, there is no oil injection system on this engine yet. This is my long form video of this procedure. The materials I am showing here are the materials I prefer to use for a quality job. I have used OEM lines in the past, but the clamps I show here don't really fit over those lines. The original oil lines tend to shrink from age and heat from the exhaust, so you want to add about a half inch to three quarters inch to the long hose section so the lines are long enough in the future to shrink and not pop off. Make sure the check valve arrows are pointing towards the intake. Install the long side of the line on the intake side nipple and secure with a squeeze clamp. Once you have all the lines assembled, routed properly, and secured to the intake side nipples, you want to leave the oil pump in loose so you can prime the lines with two-stroke oil. If you are prepping a 1200 or 1300 power valve engine for install into your ski, this part of the video shows how complete it can be when you drop it into your ski. Don't forget to check my description for links to tools and materials used in this video. Now, it's time to get started on priming the system. Hey guys, here we are today. Uh, I'm going to show you how I, I go through and uh, prime the oil lines on a two-stroke uh, engine. This is actually a GP1300R Yamaha engine. Uh, and what I normally do is I actually use this injector. Uh, it actually has a uh, Yamalube two-stroke oil in it. Uh, and I actually use, uh, pretty much pull the lines loose. Uh, what I do is I normally set them up, uh, pretty much put the, um, put the check valves in, have the uh, check valves pointing in the direction of the motor. They actually have an arrow on them going that direction. Uh, and I do put double, um, double metal tab tie straps. These are stainless steel metal tab tie straps on here. Uh, I also have uh, press clamps or squeeze clamps on the end down here because these actually fit really nice and tight. These are kind of like the ones that they use on Kawasaki's. I'm uh, pretty sure that's almost like the identical clamp, pretty close to it, but um, it's very similar. I actually think I've got these at O'Reilly's in a little little pack, uh, but they fit really nice and snug on this side. You can grab them, pull them, you can't even pull the uh, clamps off. Um, but at this point, I'm going to show you kind of a... Uh, where we're at, uh, I do normally, sorry, this is kind of like cutting off the uh, screen here, um, but normally it's just like this. I'm gonna kick I'm gonna kick the camera over just here so you can see a little bit better. Get this just a little bit better right there. Okay, how's that? Okay, that'll be better. Um, so what we gotta do is, uh, I do kind of just put it in this. This is a plastic syringe. Uh, I do get these from uh, West Marine. They're kind of for using uh, epoxy, injecting epoxy in like tight areas. Um, but I'm just going to end up, uh, putting it over. It's nice to have a rag here just cause sometimes it does squeeze out a little bit, but if you watch it, it's going to fill this line all the way up and it's going to go out. It's going to end up right here. So it's going to fill all the way to there. So if you want to watch it to the end, uh, that's pretty much going to be where it'll fit and where we'll finish up. You do have to kind of hold it tight so that you can inject it all the way in and it gets it all the way through the system. So watch it. It's going to fill it. There it goes. It just finished up right here. So this is color. You can see down there, the last one that I haven't done yet. Uh, that one is uh, actually still still yellow. This has got the uh, blue tint, blue tint. I did this one first. This one's the second one. Uh, and now this uh, second or the middle cylinder is full. So in order to keep from having a, too much of an air bubble here, you can kind of just fill the last little bit out to the end. Um, just make sure you don't over kind of overdo it. But uh, that just kind of cuts down the, uh, the air bubble at the very end when you go to, go to start the uh, ski up and stuff. Um, put it on get it all the way down and I typically use metal tab these are stainless steel skinny metal tab tie straps is what I use on these uh, they're very you know, very skinny but they are long so it allows you to get in there I mean it's kind of like a, a little easier when you're working in front of the motor when the motor's still in the ski uh, but that's what I use uh, on those ends and so like I said pretty much you just get ready you pull the lines loose you prep them uh, prep them all complete with the uh, clamps on the here. Uh, these are Tigon fuel line is what I'm using here. They're uh, pretty much used for fuel and oil. You can use them for both. Um, I, I have used the silicone original, uh, silicone looking original Yamaha lines uh, before, but um, uh, they're, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say they're about the same diameter. These are one eighth inch uh, inner diameter. And I want to say quarter inch outer diameter. So they have a really thick wall, just like the uh, OE ones do. Uh, you can go either way. I think I, I like either one of them. Uh, I do like the Tigon ones. They've really held up really well. I've used them on a lot of projects. Um, but that's just to give you an idea. So I'm going to do one more for you. All right, so we're going to do the last one here so you can kind of see it. Hopefully we can get a good good visual on this. Pull it up through. Yeah, we're doing good. 
All right. And like I said, if you just kind of put a little rag around it when you go to push it, so you does you don't push it all over your hand or anything, it just kind of helps to make it a little bit cleaner. Uh, I just kind of hold it. You can watch it. It's going to come here first and keep going. It's going to follow the whole line. It's going to end up at the very end down there. That's going to be the last cylinder. All right, so it's filling right there in the middle. Pass the check valve. You keep going. You watch it. Watch all the way to the end. It's going to end up filling all the way to the end. And it should be about there now. Just about there. Yep, there it is. Just finished it. All right, like I said, you can, uh, if you're filling the lines, you get a little bit too much excess in there, it's okay. You're not going to, you don't want to just push it and like fill it up with oil like crazy, but it doesn't matter if you get a little bit of excess in there. As soon as you start it, at least you'll know that you already have some oil in the motor, some two stroke oil in the motor. It should burn it off pretty quickly once you start uh, trying to run it. A little, a little too much oil is not that bad, but you just don't want to have way too much oil in there is all. So oh, I'm going to finish filling this last little. This last little bit, like I said, you kind of just try to get it uh, all the way to the, push it all the way to the end there. There you go. Well, that's pretty sweet. Okay. And it's going to, since it has check valves in there, it kind of holds it pretty good. But, um, and hopefully you can kind of see how I do these tie straps. Let's see. I'm going to put one in, kind of wrap it around, pull this up. I get the first one on the first rib. Um, there's like two, two little ridges on that nipple, and I get the typically get the first one on the on the first rib, on the first edge, right there, and make sure the line's all the way down, and I lock it down right there. I like to cut these real flush with these little uh, little tiny cutters. You have to roll it around that's fine too you don't want to have the uh the tie strap head sticking too far out because you do have your um you have your oil pump cable that comes down right here and you want to have clearance make sure that everything is clearanced well there there's nothing that's going to bind when the cable's moving up and down so it's kind of i just kind of turn these around when i'm done with them <clears throat> i'm going to do number two and this is this one's just going to go as a secondary backup this one's going to go right below that second rib, and it's going to, it should catch that, um, that second part, but it's going to catch the last part of the line so that the line itself uh, just stays completely sealed. Even if that first one was to fail, you'd have a second, a second one there to kind of give it a little bit of a backup. So, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm all for a little bit of, kind of a little bit of overkill, but don't want to go crazy, crazy with it. All right, I'm going to do this last, these last two because uh, I'm trying to get this engine ready to go. That way you can kind of see get the best ideas of how I do these. You can kind of see them on the uh, check valves. Um, but this is right there. So that is that, that first rib of the nipple. Lock it down. Oops. Okay, and then get the second one. You can kind of start it up here and just pull it around. Just gotta get it, make sure it's around the actual line that you're trying to work on. <laughs> Sometimes they're really long, you kind of get a little bit, a bit of a pain there. Like I said, wrap these around. Try not to snap them when you pull them around, but just push them around so that they're not sticking out. Okay, and this is the last one. Okay, so we got it on. That's the last one needed. All right, and those are the lines. So now they're plumbed up. The they typically this is a 1300R engine. They typically go through this. Uh, they have the other other fuel line and stuff like that that go through here. Uh, but they have like on these locations right here, they'll get, they'll get tie strapped down here, like along here. There's other wiring that goes along there too, so it kind of needs to be uh, tied in with with it. But now the oil lines are full. That's good. Get everything that's needed there. I'm going to end up dropping the motor in. Actually, this is one of the things that goes in there. So it kind of wraps down and goes that direction, kind of flips around just like that and hooks up down at that end. Um, but this is, you know, you kind of have the wiring. And then you got your exhaust. It kind of comes over here and it bolts, bolts to here and then bolts to here. So everything that's in this area does need to be kind of secure and tight to the motor uh, when you're prepping it. But that gives you the best idea as to how these are set up. 
um, you know, how you want to get them, get them full. They're all primed. So at this point, as soon as I get ready to start it, um, I really don't have to do anything crazy. If you haven't completely primed them and you've got air in the lines, like little air pockets in the lines, my biggest suggestion is to uh, take the plugs out, pull the plug wires, or actually not, not take the plugs out, leave the plugs in, um, take the plug wires loose, hang them outside the ski. And at that point, you can pull the throttle full throttle. Um, at that point, if you're doing that, it's going to give full oil. But as long as the spark plugs are not going to start the motor, it'll allow you to uh, turn the motor over and it's going to turn that oil pump. It's going to pump, 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 pump. You don't want to keep doing it too long, but if you have to, you can actually take the plugs out, spray it with a fog and oil. But that's give, going to give you a good suggestion as to what to do if for any reason you have all the exhaust on and you don't know what to do and you want to prime, try to prime it up a little bit more. You don't want to continually turn it over for a long period of time doing that without actually injecting maybe some fog and oil in the cylinders. But at least if you know that you see some oil getting to the cylinders, that's one of my best suggestions to you because you can't get down there and do this to the oil pump. Um, you can't like pull the armature down there because the, uh, the air box and the exhaust and all that stuff is in the way. You can't get to it at all. So that allows you to pull. If you pull the throttle, it's going to do this. It's going to pull that oil pump full wide open. And at that point, if you turn it over, it's going to constantly turn the motor and it's going to pump, uh, pump the oil pump and it's going to push the oil pump and start pumping that oil uh, through the lines uh, into the motor. So that's my best suggestion if you're trying to prime the system uh, after you've assembled it and you forgot to do it. So hopefully that helps. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. This is what the system should look like when you're all finished up. Make sure you have a clamp or tie straps on every connection and be sure no leaks are visible. Please post any comments or questions you have in the comment section.